Many dams around the globe are at risk of failing, and in many cases, it's not a matter of if, but when. The state of Michigan learned this the hard way in May of 2020, when a dam failure there forced over 10,000 people to evacuate. In the United States alone, there are over 1,600 dams that have been labeled as high hazard. That means, if they break, there is a risk that at least one human life could be lost. These dams are in poor and unsatisfactory condition, and some estimates indicate it could cost upwards of $70 billion to repair all of them. And this isn't just an issue in the United States. Many at-risk dams around the planet are located near heavily populated areas. One bad earthquake or storm could result in the dams breaking and countless lives being lost. From the Fort Peck Dam in Montana to the Three Gorges Dam in China, here are five dams that could fail at any second. In June of 2020, China experienced torrential downpours of epic proportions. These storms wreaked havoc throughout 24 provinces, and the strength of these rains called into question the viability of the country's massive Three Gorges Dam, with experts warning that it could collapse at any moment. The Three Gorges Dam is the world's largest hydropower project. Despite the government's continual assurances that the dam is structurally sound, the public remains weary. Chinese hydrologist Wang Weila remains the biggest skeptic of the dam's viability. He pointed out that the dam's quality inspection, construction, and overall design were all conducted by the same group. Additionally, he believed the project as a whole was completed too quickly. It's also been found that the water levels for at least 148 rivers in China have risen above their warning thresholds, which means the Three Gorges Dam will have a limited effect on future flood control. Over the years, the Three Gorges Dam was praised as being one of the greatest engineering accomplishments in human history. However, structural integrity, including warps and cracks, could put many lives, particularly those living in the lower reaches of the Yangtze River, at risk. When the dam was first built, Chinese officials said it could withstand the worst flood in a 10,000-year period. Not long after that, they changed the time frame to 1,000 years, and eventually 100 years. This shows the lowering confidence in the dam's structural integrity. Other scientists who have spoken out about potential issues have been criminalized, and it's possible the public in China is woefully unprepared for an unprecedented catastrophe. If the dam were to fail, it would impact over 400 million people living downstream, and could very well be the worst flood in recorded history. The Isabella Dam The Isabella Dam was built in the early 1950s and sits on the Lake Isabella, far above the city of Bakersfield, California. The dam is dangerous, however, and currently faces two very real threats. The first threat has to do with the dam's construction. The Isabella Dam was built before modern engineering and fails to meet modern standards. This means the dam's infrastructure is vulnerable and internal erosion could cause a failure. The second threat is that the dam was built close to an active seismic fault. This seismic fault could cause an earthquake that would, in turn, cause the dam to fail. Measures were taken in 2005 to ensure the dam did not take in too much water and mitigated the amount of water pressure on the dam. However, if the reservoir above the dam becomes too full, the water pressure could be great enough to cause a failure. And if the dam were to fail, the entire city of Bakersfield would be flooded under 20 feet of water, causing mass destruction. Not too far from the small town of Glasgow, Montana, is one of the biggest reservoirs in the entire world, the Fort Peck Dam. But according to Dr. Bernard Shanks, this nearly 80-year-old dam is one of the most hazardous in North America. Dr. Shanks is a former land and wildlife advisor who has been studying dams on the Missouri River for over 40 years. He believes the central problem lies in the way the dam was built. His thoughts were echoed by Darren McMurray, the Fort Peck Dam Operations Manager, who stated, The dam itself was constructed out of hydraulic fill, which is basically a slurry of mud and water pumped from both downstream and upstream of the dam location. It's not a safe methodology to build dams. 
This technique makes it much more likely the dam could collapse, and there is historical precedent for this. When the dam was first constructed in 1938, there was a collapse that resulted in the deaths of eight men. Over the decades, dam construction has moved away from hydraulic filling for this very reason. If Fort Peck were to burst, then it would result in a domino-like effect that would also result in the destruction of five other dams located downstream, reaching all the way to St. Louis. Along the way, the flooding would destroy pipelines, highways, bridges, and anything else in its path. It would become the worst flood in American history, with thousands of lives lost. Fortunately, there doesn't seem to be any imminent risk, but it's only a matter of time until the right combination of factors coalesces. An earthquake of the right magnitude could be enough to set it off. In 2011, the Army Corps of Engineers proposed $225 million to repair the Fort Peck Dam, yet they only received roughly one-fifth of that amount. While there are many projects that require government attention, the Fort Peck Dam is one that should not be ignored for much longer. The Mosul Dam in Iraq The Mosul Dam is currently called the most dangerous dam in the world and is the largest dam in Iraq. The Mosul Dam sits on the Tigris River just north of Mosul. The dam is 2 miles wide and can hold 2.7 cubic miles of water. 1.7 million residents in Mosul rely on the dam to provide them with electricity. It opened on July 7, 1986 and cost $1.5 billion to construct. But it has been plagued with problems right from the start. The dam continuously sprouted leaks and several sinkholes have even developed. Furthermore, the dam was built on the top of gypsum, which is a soft mineral that can dissolve if it comes in contact with water. Because of this, the dam has huge potential for interior erosion. In 2006, the United States Army Corp of Engineers talked about the dam's dangers. They declared that, should the dam collapse, Mosul would be flooded under 65 feet of water. Baghdad would also be submerged under 15 feet of water. The estimated death toll would be half a million people, and another 7 million people would be affected, injured, or forced to evacuate their homes. On October 30, 2007, the U.S. Special Inspector General for Iraq released a startling report on the dam. The report stated that the dam's foundations could give way at any moment. Time is therefore very much of the essence. The Mosul Dam is not just dangerous, it's ready to release its dangers and subsequent destruction at any given moment. In 2017, Hurricane Harvey ravaged the state of Texas. Even before the hurricane, things weren't looking good for the Attics and Barker dams, but the hurricane only proved the need to be more proactive about a dam on the brink of failure. During the hurricane, water levels in the reservoirs filled to record levels. To prevent the dams from becoming too overwhelmed, the United States Army Corps of Engineers released water into the Buffalo Bayou. The dams were already considered extremely high risk due to their age and the signs of them beginning to wear out. The Corps has insisted that the dams present no immediate threat of failing, and they even seemed more confident after surviving Hurricane Harvey. However, Fixing the dams needs to remain one of Houston's priorities. Jim Blackburn, a local environmental attorney, said, I don't think there's any question about it. If these dams were to burst, if we were to have a dam failure, it would be devastating. I mean, it would just wipe out the west side of Houston. I think that is a remote possibility, but it is a very real possibility. But fortunately, progress has been made to minimize the threat. Crews continue to work on new gates and concrete channels to help better control the flow of water. With so many dams around the world at risk of failure, it's important that locals near these dams work hard to minimize that risk and make the necessary repairs, because if they don't, the results could be catastrophic. The Kariba Dam in South Africa the Kariba Dam is a concrete dam that sits on the Zambezi River Basin. The dam is situated between Zambia and Zimbabwe. It is massive, standing 420 feet tall and 1,900 feet long. The dam is responsible for the foundation of Lake Kariba, which is a large lake that spans 170 miles. 
The dam was initially opened in 1959, but since 2008, the dam has experienced a plethora of troubling problems, leading experts to declare the Kariba Dam as both dangerous and unsafe. In 2008 and 2010, rising water levels caused flooding, forcing over 150,000 people to evacuate their homes. This was, of course, a cause for concern. But the real cause for concern came in 2014, when engineers discovered that the foundations of the dam were weak, and that the dam would fail unless necessary repairs were made. The dam was built on a solid foundation of basalt, but over the years, the basalt has corroded quite a bit. Should the dam fail, a tsunami-sized torrent of water would barrel through the Zambezi Valley and would reach Mozambique in only eight short hours. The failure would mean that 40% of South Africa's hydroelectric power would be wiped out. It would also cause unknown devastation to wildlife and the ecosystem in the valley. It's estimated that should the dam fail, 3.5 million people could be at risk. But fortunately, in 2018, repairs began and are still underway. Before we close out today's video, we have just a few honorable mentions that didn't make the list. Today's honorable mention does not go to a specific dam, but rather a specific type of dam. Low head dams. Low head dams are common, dangerous, and deadly. They are built to span rivers and streams and are called low head dams because they are not highly visible. Most of them are actually built under the water. These dams and the water surrounding them is deceiving. Unsuspecting swimmers can actually be pulled under by the dam. And once they are pulled under, it's almost impossible to escape. The bottom of the dam produces extremely strong currents that literally push people to the bottom of the water. Swimmers, kayakers, boaters, rafters, and everything in between can be at risk. Low head dams also create reverse currents that can disorient the person trapped. And due to their torrent currents, the water in a low head dam does not have very much buoyancy. So even life jackets and life preservers would be little help. Thousands of these dams were built in the 1800s. But in modern times, these dams are banned. But many people don't know where all the low head dams are actually placed. And there are no warning sites to alert potential people of their existence. Low head dams are often referred to as drowning machines due to the high number of deaths they cause annually. The Mulaperiyar Dam in Kerala, India finished construction in 1895. Water from the Periyaru Lake is diverted through a shatter shed and transferred through a series of pipelines to the Periyar power station where it's used to generate electricity. It's an important feature in the region, but there is some genuine cause for concern about its longevity. In 1979, India suffered a tragedy when the Morvi Dam failed, resulting in the deaths of 15,000 individuals. Safety concerns were then placed on the Mulaperiyar Dam, which was already experiencing alleged cracks and leaks. Shortly thereafter, a study was conducted which found that the dam would not be able to withstand the force of an earthquake with a power of at least magnitude 6 on the Richter scale. The main problem is that this dam was constructed with methods that are no longer deemed viable. For example, the dam was made using stone rubble masonry with lime mortar grouting. Worst of all, the dam is located in a region that has been deemed seismically active. Tremors and smaller earthquakes have occurred since the 1980s. Fortunately, none of them were strong enough to cause significant damage to the dam, but the risk remains. It is for this reason that calls have transpired in recent years to decommission the dam. Expert opinion is divided, with some people believing repairs are enough to hold off catastrophe, while others are convinced this dam simply needs to go. If nothing was done and the dam were to break, then 3.5 million lives would be at risk of suddenly being swept away in torrential flooding. The longer the country continues to wait, the longer millions of lives are in jeopardy. Lake Isabella rests at the southernmost tip of the Sierra Nevada mountains. It's located about 3,000 feet over the city of Bakersfield, a town with a population of roughly 350,000 people. The Isabella Dam, located at this lake, was constructed in the early 1950s, long before modern engineering standards were in place. 
which makes it highly vulnerable to damage. Internal erosion could potentially lead to seepage and ultimately total failure. And as though that wasn't bad enough, geologists have also found that the dam was built directly alongside an active fault line. These problems were discovered in the 2000s, and an action plan immediately went into place to prevent more seepage from occurring. However, the dam still has plenty of issues, and over a quarter of a million people are in harm's way. This is why it is paramount for residents of Bakersfield, California to be aware of the issue the dam presents, so they can have an action plan to get out of harm's way should the dam ever fail. The Army Corps has issued a statement saying how it doesn't appear as though the dam will break anytime soon. In 2017, the Corps awarded a $204 million contract to construct modifications at the dam to address identified seepage concerns as well as seismic and overtopping issues. New constructions began in 2018 and is expected to be finished by 2022. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to click the link on screen to check out our video of 5 fireworks shows that went horribly wrong. As always, thank you for watching and we will see you in the next one.